Coming right on the heels of the Olympic Games are the far less discussed but equally interesting Paralympic Games. And just like the Olympic Games, the Paralympics have an incredible history, they have some incredible athletes, and a little sliver of controversy from time to time. So today, let's count down 10 of the more interesting facts about the Paralympic Games. Number 10, the origins date back to 1948. I have to confess, I didn't realize the Paralympic tradition dates back as far as it does, but that ignorance of mine has now been corrected. In 1948, a group of World War II veterans with spinal cord injuries from Britain got together for a day of events. This was organized to take place on the opening day of the 1948 Summer Olympics, which were being hosted in London. The event was spearheaded by a German Jewish man named Ludwig Gutmann of Stoke Mandeville Hospital, who had fled Nazi Germany in 1939. He wanted to create an elite sports competition to showcase athletes with disabilities right alongside the traditional Olympic Games. And this ended up happening, he got his wish, and for a few years it grew steadily with more and more international participants. And finally, the first official Paralympic Games took place in 1960, right alongside those Rome Summer Olympics, and it's been firmly in place ever since. Number nine, Paralympians in the early Olympics. Even though the official Paralympic Games didn't start until 1960, that did not stop athletes with disabilities from competing in the traditional Olympic Games, not by a long shot. The first athlete to do so was German-American gymnast George Iser, way back in 1904 at the St. Louis Olympics. He had one artificial leg. A man named Oliver Halasi, a Hungarian amputee water polo player, he competed in three successive Olympic Games beginning in 1928. And another Hungarian, Karoli Takash competed in shooting events in both the 1948 and 1952 Summer Olympics. He was a right arm amputee and could shoot left-handed and apparently shoot very well indeed. Then there's the story of Liz Hartel, a Danish equestrian athlete who had contracted polio in 1943, but went on to win a silver medal in the dressage event in the 1952 Summer Olympics. What a badass. So even though separate games have been hosted since 1960, the participation of athletes with disabilities is basically as old as the Olympics themselves. Number eight, there are 10 eligible impairment types. I think this is a common question that folks would have. What exactly are the impairments that make an athlete eligible for the Paralympic Games? Well, I'm here today to tell you that it can be broken down into 10 different types. The first seven are impaired muscle power, impaired passive range of movement, limb deficiency, leg length difference, short stature, vision impairment, and intellectual impairment. On top of those seven, there is hypertonia, which is sometimes called rigidity, ataxia, which is a neurological sign consisting of lack of voluntary coordination of muscle movements, and athetosis, which is a symptom characterized by slow, involuntary, convoluted writhing movements of the fingers, hands, toes, feet, and in some cases, arms, leg, and neck. Those 10 impairments can then be broken down into subcategories, but I think you get the idea. So the next time this comes up in conversation, you are now equipped with the answer. Hey everyone, just a quick pause here for me to ask a question. With the Olympics wrapping up, I'm keen to keep doing videos that everyone wants to see. So if you have any great ideas, please drop them in the comments below. Thanks in advance and let's get back to the list. Number seven, the Special Olympics are not the Paralympics. Here is a common misconception which we should put to bed once and for all. The Special Olympics are not the same as the Paralympics. The Special Olympics are a separate thing altogether, and the primary difference is that the Special Olympics are focused on athletes with intellectual disabilities, whereas the Paralympics are more focused on physical disabilities. As previously mentioned though, intellectual disabilities is one of the category for eligibility in the Paralympics, so there is some crossover between the two. And there are actually even more differences than just the physical versus intellectual disabilities. Most notably, the Special Olympics typically don't occur in the years where there are Olympic or Paralympic Games. At the time of making this video, for example, the most recent Special Olympics were in 2023. And unlike the Paralympics, they are typically not hosted in the same city as the Olympic Games. Often they are actually in cities that have never even been close to the Olympic radar. Past hosts include Boise, Idaho, Anchorage, Alaska, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Dublin, Ireland, and Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. Not gonna lie, I kinda like the variety there. Number six, Trisha Zorn, the most decorated Paralympian in history. I'm honestly not gonna have enough time to properly dive into Trisha Zorn. There's a high probability though she ends up getting her own video, but I will give you the overview here for now. 
Trisha Zorn is a swimmer, and her impairment is that she is blind. Her career spanned 24 years, from 1980 to 2004, and during that time, she won an astounding 55 Paralympic medals. To put that into perspective, Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympic athlete of all time, she had about double the number of medals as Phelps. That's unreal. And even more insane, of those 55 medals, 41 were gold medals, 41, that is bananas. So just how good was she? Well, she was actually an alternate for the Olympic team for USA Swimming in 1980, but she didn't get a chance then as those were the infamously boycotted Moscow Olympics. Like I say, there is so much more I could say, but we'll save it for another time. But always remember the name Trisha Zorn. Number five, cheating at the Paralympics. As we all know, the Olympics has had its fair share of cheating over its history, performance enhancing drugs, bribery, you name it, and it's probably happened. And unfortunately, the Paralympics are no different. The most common accusation is that athletes with disabilities don't actually have disabilities. In 2000, for example, at the Sydney Paralympics, a Spanish basketball player alleged that several members of the gold medal winning Spanish basketball team with intellectual disabilities did not actually have disabilities. This prompted an investigation which discovered that, yes, the rules for intellectual disabilities were being broken. But it was even bigger than that. As it turns out, it wasn't just the Spanish doing this, and it wasn't just in basketball where these rules were being broken. It was everywhere. This actually led to the events for intellectual disabilities being suspended until they could sort things out. This ban was lifted in 2008, but obviously serious damage was done. Steroid use has also been a common recurring theme, no surprise there, but there are also science type tricks like gene therapy that threaten the integrity of the games. So sadly, cheating is not just reserved for the Olympics. Number four, the Paralympic flag motto and anthem. A quick look at the Paralympic flag shows that it is quite distinct from the traditional Olympic rings we're all familiar with. The current Paralympic flag, which has been in use since 2020, contains three colors, red, green, and blue. These are used because they are the most commonly used colors on national flags around the world, so thus are considered the most globally representative. The colors are each in the shape of an agito, which is the name given to an asymmetrical crescent specifically designed for the Paralympic movement. Agito is Latin and roughly translates as I move, makes sense. The Paralympic motto is currently Spirit in Motion, and the Paralympic anthem is Hymn de l'Avenir, or Anthem of the Future. It was composed by Thierry Darny and adopted as the official anthem of the Paralympics in March 1996. Number three, the opening and closing ceremonies. This is an area where the Olympics and the Paralympics very closely align. Both games have opening and closing ceremonies, both games have the lighting and extinguishing of the flames, both have ceremonial flag raising and anthems, both have a ton of speeches, etc, etc. And like the Olympic ceremonies, there is also an effort to bridge from one Paralympic Games to another, including a cultural presentation by the next host city. So at the Paris 2024 Paralympic closing ceremonies, we'll all see more stuff about Los Angeles. The opening ceremony also features a cultural presentation of the host city. So if you didn't like the one for Paris 2024, maybe the Paralympics will be more to your taste. Who knows? You'll have to tune in to find out. Number two, Paralympic sports. There are 22 sports represented at the Summer Paralympic Games and six sports at the Winter Paralympic Games. For the Summer Games, for example, you'll see all of the typical favorites from the Summer Olympics, including swimming, athletics, badminton, cycling, table tennis, you get the idea. But if you wanted a reason to check out the Paralympics, they also have sports that we don't get to see in the Summer Olympics. Obviously, there are some wheelchair variants, such as in tennis, basketball, fencing, and rugby, but there are also some really neat sports that are totally different. For example, bocce has been a Paralympic sport since 1984, and that's awesome. Football slash soccer is five aside at the Paralympics, that's also cool. Powerlifting is at the Paralympics, but not in the Olympics. And there's also something called goalball, which you may have seen on social media, and it's fantastic. Do check it out when you get a chance. Number one, the all-time medal table. Not unlike the Olympics, the USA has won the most medals all-time in the Paralympic Games. At the time of recording, just before the Paris 2024 Paralympics, the USA has won 2,616 total medals across both the Summer and Winter Paralympics. In second place is Great Britain with 1,954, and in third is China with just under 1,300. But it gets way more interesting when you break out the Summer and the Winter Paralympic Games. The all-time leader at the Winter Paralympics is Austria. 
who have won 345 total medals all time, just ahead of Norway and the USA. Would any of you have guessed Austria? Be honest, would you? I sure didn't. Well, there you have it. That's today's video, and I hope you learned a little something about the Paralympic Games. These games are just as interesting and exciting as the Olympics, so check them out when you get a chance. Talk soon, friends. Enjoy the sports.